Hello, my name is Jim Zimlansky and I'm the site manager at our Proctor facility and one of the founding partners at Twente Additive Manufacturing. My name is Kasia Olefnowicz and I'm the head of finance and one of the founding partners at Twente Additive Manufacturing. My name is Tim Brodesser and I'm the head of research and development and one of the founding partners at Twente Additive Manufacturing. My name is Orshi Benkotsi and I work in operations at Twente Additive Manufacturing. I'd first like to thank Digital Construction Week London for giving us this opportunity to speak to you in this format. Twente Additive Manufacturing is part of a very fast-paced industry that is undergoing phenomenal changes as automation and robotics are finally finding their way into the construction sites. Virtually every other global industry has already long embraced the utilization of discrete manufacturing automation and even within the construction industry, supply chain factories have robotics and digital fabrication as the norm. It is truly high time that the on-site construction strategies include robotics to meet the ever-increasing demand for higher throughput at lower cost and less health and safety risk. What makes concrete 3D printing different than most forms of additive manufacturing is that we are working with a cementious product that must flow nicely through a pump, through the hose, and build up without collapse as each subsequent layer gets extruded onto the last. What this means is there is a very fine balance between viscosity and thixotropic properties that requires to maintain a tight set of parameters to create concrete objects that are strong and buildable yet attractive. We will showcase some of the applications that make 3D printing concrete so amazing and probably the technology that will have the single biggest impact on the concrete industry over the next 20 years. You will see a fairly broad variety of printing conditions that will perhaps create some confusion as sometimes the printers are moving very slowly and sometimes they move incredibly quickly. We use term 1K and 2K, which is the current nomenclature to differentiate between the two most common technologies. So 1K is a single component printing media that has all the accelerator in the dry mix so it only requires being mixed with water in order for it to make up its final chemistry that allows it to cure. This material generally is firm to the touch in about five to nine minutes. The 2K is a double component mixture that mixes water in at the pumping location, but then has a secondary mixer right at the extrusion nozzle that injects accelerator into the mix just before it is extruded onto the part that is being printed. This can be set to firm in about 30 to 90 seconds. Of course, all these variables can be adjusted depending on the nature of the print. We decided early on to stay out of the material business so that we could help any cement company get into the industry by formulating their own recipes. We are working with Ledicret, Lafarge Holcim, Heidelberg, Baumit, Sika, Kencrete, and to name just a few. Their materials all have different properties that make them the best for a given application. We take it upon ourselves to design machines that will work with any of them and whomever else might be coming out with a new mix created for 3D printing. One key aspect to understand about 3D printing concrete is that very little of the speed has to do with the robotic or machinery capabilities, but rather the part design itself ends up dictating how quickly subsequent layers can be assembled. We often use the build rate as the key metric to managing the print schedule as collapses occur. If the print media below is too soft to support the mass of the part that is being built on top of it. In all the examples you will see in this video, we had to go through painstaking qualifications to get the balance correct. It would seem that the technology is as simple as connecting a mortar pump to a robot or a gantry CNC. However, there is a lot more to it. We do start with basic robots and pumps, but we must take it a little further. Twente Additive Manufacturing prides itself on being the most technically adept company operating in this space, but we do have some phenomenal competition out there working just as hard to push the boundaries as this process is approaching more mainstream applications. At Twente, we start by completely tearing apart the off-the-shelf pumps and adding a much more robust and varied sensor array to allow us real-time adjustment of the mix ratios should we start to have inconsistencies in the print bead. The other key element is generating the code that runs our printers. It is often several thousand lines of instructions going into machines that in general usually ever receive hundreds. 
at any rate we won't get lost in the fine details of the technology but let's use this short amount of time we have to showcase some of the things we have invented and printed over the past 24 months immediately the very first area that is very quickly adopting 3d printed concrete is landscape architecture and urban furniture the flexibility allows designers to create permanent installations that are unique and robust to put up with the types of abuses common in public spaces. We wanted to showcase the variability and adaptability of the process being applied in natural spaces as well. Concrete furniture by its very nature can be difficult to make comfortable when considering the limitations of traditional formwork. Here you can see we basically created a lounge chair that is incredibly comfortable. Once it's filled, it can be placed on a beachfront and the violent waves that hit it will just simply wash around. It was printed on its side and we actually printed this at a live demonstration for the Big Five Exposition in Dubai only a couple of weeks after building our first 9-axis printer. One of the key advantages that digital fabrication allows is the process of parametric design. I am sure many of you are familiar with this already in software design from managing the BIM which allows for quick dimensional updates if there is a design change that will impact other components. However, with 3D printing, we can take parametric design several steps further. This shade screen you see being printed here is a series of stars based on the classic Arabic geometry that is ubiquitous all over the Middle East. However, if you look closely, you can see that the stars up top are larger than those on the bottom. This entire geometry uses the algorithmic calculations created by the software that would allow this pattern to be fit into any outside shape and will automatically recreate the star sizes to line up on the exterior perimeter. We then printed a mock-up of the beach cabana that would be suiting for such a nice lounger and shade panel. There really are boundless opportunities for creativity with this style of construction. We teamed up with renowned Aboriginal artist Alano Edzerza, who created the Thunderbird art and then also supplied the vectors we used to create a very unique concrete slab. By printing 20 cm dams in the shape of his art, we were able to fill the remainder with various colors of pigmented conventional concrete. Of course, this technology has a bit of a learning curve to it, and we have found that hands-on training goes a long ways. For this, we asked our clients to come try printing with us before we ship them a printer. When we bring clients to our R&D facility for training, we make them look around our work yard and community park and have them design something of their own, such as a set of stairs. In these shots, we see a team that traveled from the US to print a staircase. Yet they spent more time measuring the location than they did doing the programming. They wanted to break the record for the longest set of printed stairs in North America. So we let them span this cliff face for a total of 3.5 meters. They ran the printer themselves for the first time and made the set in under five hours. The shrinking talent pool of skilled concrete form workers has driven the cost of custom staircases through the roof. Again, here's an application where parametric design and 3D printing can be used to cut down the time to deliver and inevitably the cost of staircases that are custom built. Even when compared to precast, the costing we have found is almost identical. Precast, however, is limited to where it can be used as the rise, run and landings must be designed to fit the staircases that already exist. 3D printing, however, allows you to build them for the specific location. In this example here, we had four different slopes, each with their own unique geometry. We tailored each flight to fit correctly. The total cost to the client for these four sets was just under 6,000 euros. A quote we received to do the exact same set custom was almost triple the cost and would have taken over a week. These were done in under three days including installation. It is worth noting that we chose to use a lower cost infill of ready mix concrete as currently the materials we print with are significantly more expensive than standard concrete. We designed these parts to be infilled in this manner to minimize the cost to our clients. This also allows for conventional reinforcement such as steel and fiberglass rebar to be inserted where necessary. While precast furniture is an incredibly robust and low cost solution, municipalities have had little selection among the variety of bench and picnic table providers with shapes that are usually quite generic. 
We took this as an opportunity to show how there can be whimsy and creativity with 3D printing. This children's picnic table features a rabbit as the table support. You could swap that out for a city symbol, a company logo, really, whatever you can make fit. Coincidentally, we wanted to be the first company in the world to print right onto a transport vehicle, so we did that too, which saved us having to load the massive table after it was done printing. This removed one potentially dangerous lift and also cut the risk of installation mishap in half. Retaining walls, security walls, elevated planters all make for great 3D printed applications. Here you can see we printed a wall that will protect cars in a parking area from falling off a cliff, but the barrier has a unique cosmetic pattern printed in and the top 30 cm will hold potted flowers. Last year we were invited to make the world's first 3D printed playground. We chose to create a perimeter that could be printed at our R&D facility, then transported to the site and assembled very quickly. The layout forms the shape of a freshwater salmon called the kokanee, which is an at-risk species. The perimeter elements that hold the fall protection fiber were mortared in place much the same way you would place a curbstone. The installation pieces nested together making the assembly straightforward and simple for the team to get accurate. The tail section and dorsal fin section of the fish were elevated to serve as benches for the parents. Again, the use of low cost ready mix was chosen to help reduce the burden to the local Rotary Club who were donating this park to its community. Of course, the holy grail in any construction technology is whether or not it can be used to create buildings. Not only is 3D printing concrete already at the technical level for close to 100 buildings standing worldwide, it is fast being recognized for its building capability that is pushing the conventional concrete structure. Here we created a rapidly deployed building inspired by the simplicity known already to the tilt-up building companies. However, we wanted to show how printing can add assembly features that make it even easier. This particular structure is a utility building with a shallow roof slope that can be transported upright and craned into place. The corners have interlocking features that make it so the building could stand indefinitely as a temporary installation. It can be easily removed at a later date or left to sit safely while it waits for permanent anchoring. We recently had an opportunity to take over a built project in a brutal desert conditions just outside of Dubai. The project started as a cinder block structure that was not finished so we had to carry on from a slab that has already received reverb and plumbing installations. A normal gantry cell printer would have been impossible to set up rapidly in the space, and the nature of its shape would have gotten hooked up on all the protruding rebars. We were able to park our mobile silicon printer in three locations to quickly print up the walls whilst having to reach around to print within millimeters of the obstructions. This building will serve as a guard room to the entrance of a grand new courthouse being constructed by the UAE's Ministry of Justice. Blistering heat and searing windstorms created a challenge but the team shifted to night printing to be able to carry on and meet the desired schedule. We have started construction of a five-home affordable housing project with the Group World Housing. The cluster will form the shape of a Japanese cherry blossom. It is called Sakura Place. These are the initial renderings as prepared by Alterative, a forward-leaning architectural firm in Vancouver pushing 3D printing technologies to their clients. We started by building a tool room next to the build site that was being cleared for land preparation. 
This structure was erected with one setup and was printed in the rain and materials were even subject to below freezing temperatures within the first few days of printing. As you can see, this print is going in on very rough terrain and a challenging worksite. This is a pretty cool demonstration of how robust this technology can be and how well it can perform in difficult environments. When it is completed, it will be converted to the recycling station and bike parking for the tenants of World Housing. The first house printed in Canada was a project we took on ourselves with virtually no construction experience. We conceived, designed, printed and installed the concrete walls of this tiny home in just under five weeks. We used a post and beam configuration to expedite engineering sign-off for the building permit, which is why you can see these column forms that were integrated with the walls. We wanted to show off how versatile 3D printing techniques are, so we made the walls follow the Fibonacci curve, which is an ever-increasing radius that would be virtually cost prohibitive using conventional concrete arms. The completed home will have as an assembly cost of about 90,000 euros. The printed portion represents about 6,000 of that or less than 7% of the overall home cost. The majority of the cost truly came from difficulties we faced with all the non-automated construction processes. Engineering stamp off, permitting and inspection cost us more than the structure. In fact, the entire project would have been completed and we thought just a couple of months had it not been for a shortage in tradespeople able to arrive in a timely manner and keep their schedule that didn't disrupt other trades. What we learned here is that the construction industry is going to benefit immensely from the predictability of additive manufacturing. Of course, no technology can really get widespread adoption if it is not bringing to the table something that is completely impossible to produce without it. At Twente, we have been developing construction processes that will have a revolutionary impact on architectural installations. The first concept we would like to show you is called topography optimization. This is not to be confused with topology optimization. We will get into that in a few seconds. Topography optimization is the notion that a concrete structure no longer needs to start on a flat level surface. Before COVID hit, we had planned to build an ultra high-end home using 3D printing. We took a laser scan of the bedroom that protrudes through the soil that would normally have to be removed with dynamite or very heavy rock excavating equipment. By using 3D printing, we can use the laser scan to create elements that make up the exact negative form of the protruding rock it can be used as the footing, foundation or column mounting locations. Here we are showing a test piece we printed to demonstrate how we can create a level surface and a plumb column anchor. Even if you don't have access to LiDAR scanning drones, this technology can still be utilized by people to create elements. In this case, we used photogrammetry software to take a series of images from many angles and create a surface from the bedrock outcrop. We made a cliff sidebar by printing the supports that are perfectly nested to the rock face. In both of these cases, we were just going for a proof of concept, and in both cases it worked first try. Another subject we want to bring up is the amazing revolution in design which is referred to as topology optimization. The majority of these images we are showing now are courtesy of the internet. We are currently working on our own topology optimized prints as well, however, it is in conjunction with a US-based university, they will have first publishing rights. The main concept is that formwork can be created so that the absolute minimum amount of concrete and reinforcement is needed to create elevated slabs such as floor separations and roofing systems. By using a solving software that analyzes total stress loads, a particular part will see, all the non-essential material can be removed. It is conceivable that skyscrapers with 3D printed floors will weigh up to 40% less than structures using current techniques. There is absolutely no way any concrete form worker or even massive CNC shop with large mold milling capabilities can create parts like this without insane costs. With 3D printing, these parts cost the same to make as they would if they were just standard straight rectangles and cubes. We hope that this very brief introduction to how 3D printing is going to change the digital construction industry has been enlightening and interesting. We would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Hello, the name is Jim Zimlansky. <laughs>
Yeah. But this means, what this means, what this means is, what this means is that. <laughs> In a brutal dessert, dessert, no. In a brutal dessert. <laughs> One key aspect to understand about 3D concrete, 3D. <sighs> we, 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 we. But let, let's use this, let, let. That's, that's better. That was really well done. That was a boring to do it. Mm. <laughs>